This video will explain neural architecture search. Neural architecture search belongs to a family of deep learning methods known as meta-learning. Meta-learning is the idea of using, using an auxiliary search algorithm, such as random search, manual search, grid search, evolutionary search, or reinforcement learning, in order to design the characteristics of a neural network. These characteristics of the neural network can be on the surface level, with things like learning rate, uh, beta terms of optimizers, and then things like uh, the number of filter maps activate and uh, high level decisions. In neural architecture search, the meta learning characteristics of the neural network are taking a step inside the network. So some other examples of this are searching for activation functions and auto augment. In auto augment, the meta learning algorithm learns a set of data augmentation policies like shearing and rotating images in order to get more out of less data. In searching for activation functions, a series of uh, functions are uh, embedded in a discrete search space and a search algorithm designs novel activation functions for them. So the quick overview of neural architecture search is that they're going to design two convolutional layers, a normal cell and a reduction cell. The reduction cell used to reduce the spatial resolution of layers. And the algorithm is going to choose from these operations using this recurrent network procedure. And then this is an example of a discovered layer from the neural architecture search algorithm. So now into the presentation. The key idea is the neural architecture set net cell. So the idea of the algorithm is to de design a single convolutional layer rather than the entire network. And then the overall architecture of the network is manually predetermined and it's going to consist of repeatedly stacking the found normal and reduction layers on top of each other. So again, the normal layer returns a feature map of the same dimension. So in convolutional layers, if you take an input image of 32 by 32 height width and you slide a 3 by 3 kernel over it to convolve it and produce new features, you're going to now have 30 by 30 uh, height by width due to just the sliding of a 3 by 3 window on a 32 by 32 grid. So normal layers are going to return the same spatial resolution and reduction layers are going to reduce the height and width by a factor of two. And then uh, in some designs, the normal cell is repeated n times before a reduction cell. And this n is a hyperparameter of the meta-learning algorithm. And one other detail is that when they use the ImageNet data set, they're going to need more reduction cells because they need to reduce the amount of pixels in each feature map to save computation. So this is the high level idea. All the convolutional nets in the search space are composed of the designed layers from the search algorithm, the normal cell and the reduction cell. So they have the identical structure, they're just repeated several times, and then they're trained as a normal convolutional network with each layer having different weights during training. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna search on a smaller data set and then transfer the learned layer into the image net data set. So CIFAR10, these images shown on this slide, are these are actually how small CIFAR10 images are. They're only 32 by 32 RGB images, which is really small. And in addition to this, the CIFAR10 contains 50,000 training sets, compared to ImageNet, where the images are much larger, typically processed at about 300 by 300 resolution, and there's 1.2 million samples. So here we're going to get more into the details of how they design the layer, how they use reinforcement learning, how they use a recurrent neural network to predict the layer. So the high level idea of recurrent neural networks and like things like LSTMs is that they process sequences. So that rather than having fixed data, like an image, you know, an image matrix where you just, it's the same thing throughout, they break data up into sequences. Like with uh, language models, it's one word is fed at a time. And the way that this works is that, uh, the network has hidden states and it, so it has like its own hidden memory in addition to the new input at each time step. And then LSTMs are more advanced with their own like forget gate and you know auxiliary parameter terms like this. So what it's going to do is it's going to select a hidden state then conditioned on the select because it the way it predicts it is it will condition itself on its previous predictions with its internal state. So as it processes its own sequence of predictions, it's going to condition further predictions on what it has already predicted. So it's going to make these five steps in its recurrent prediction. 
It's going to select a hidden state, then it's going to select another hidden state in the layer. And these hidden states are uh, like feature maps. And then they're going to select an operation to apply it to each of the hidden states. And then they're going to define a way to concatenate the uh, outputs of the operations from the hidden states it's chosen. So these are the operations that it can choose from. It can choose to either take the feature map and do a one by one convolution on it, a three by three convolution, max pooling. It can choose any of these discrete operations to do to the hidden state it's selected. And then after it does that, it can either have an element wise addition between the two states or it can just concatenate them along the filter dimension. So just again, it's predicting normal and reduction cells. So it's going to make two times the 5B predictions in total with uh, B just being the uh, number of like connections designed internally in the layer. So the illustration is like this. It'll select a hidden layer A and a hidden layer B. Then it'll choose two operations for each hidden layer from this discrete search space. And then it'll choose a way of aggregating the new feature maps. And that res will result in the design of layers such as this. So in both these, uh, seeing the picture helps to understand why it's uh, B equals five, in addition to the five predictions it makes, which can be confusing, but is referring to like how many uh, of these kind of like internal cells it constructs. But anyway, so you can see that it uh, selects a lot of separable convolutions. That's one of the key findings of the paper is that the neural architecture search, search net really likes these separable convolutional layers. So it's kind of similar to like the inception network in, in the network and network design, how they split up the feature maps to go all these different ways. But this is a really interesting complex design that it comes up with. So again, what about random search rather than uh, going through the trouble of proximal policy optimization and using the recurrent neural network controller to design these layers? This plot shows the comparison of using the reinforcement learning search technique with the recurrent neural network compared to just randomly searching through the different operations and the different hidden states to concatenate. So in this result, it shows that reinforcement learning gets over a 1% improvement than random search. So in addition to the 1% uh, improvement on the top model, reinforcement learning also finds an entire range of models. So if you compare the top five and the top 25 models found between the methods, reinforcement learning will heavily outperform random search. Another technique that they use for the optimization of neural architecture search is scheduled drop path. And this idea is to drop some of the paths that send the feature maps to different layers with some probability similar to dropout or you just X out neurons in like a multi-layer perceptron. But the idea of scheduled drop path is that they, at their, as training progresses, they will increase the frequency at which they drop the paths. So one of the key takeaways from the paper is that it takes them four days on 500 GPUs to train this method. And it's still seven times faster than the previous approaches. The previous approach to this took 800 GPUs for 28 days. And accounting for 22,000 GPU hours, but then again, the GPUs that they use in this paper are significantly better than the old GPUs. So they do estimate that this technique is about seven times faster than previous neural architecture search algorithms. So with the results, they are able to achieve a 1.2% improvement in top one accuracy on ImageNet with 9 billion fewer floating point operations per second. And this is huge because this is totally automated. This isn't any human design features and it achieves 2.4% error rate on CIFAR-10 as well. So this table shows the plot of neural architecture search compared to methods such as DenseNet and ShakeShake -Shake regularization. These are the results on the ImageNet dataset. This plot shows how neural architecture search is able to achieve higher performance with less computation than previous human engineered uh, neural, uh, neural network designs. So one interesting thing is skip connections. Skip connections are found to work really well in networks such as ResNet shown on the left and DenseNet on the right. But they are just doing it based on repeatedly concatenating these layers without any skip connections. So they also tested uh, with just adding the skip connections after training manually and they found that this didn't improve performance. 
One other interesting application of the neural architecture search is to use this as features for object detection. So what they do is they compare the, they uh, combine the region proposal network from faster RCNN with the neural architecture search image features. Thanks for watching this video on neural architecture search. The paper link is provided in the description. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos on deep learning.